Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the New Artist Spotlight podcast. I am a special guest host and solo host today, Plummy. And if you don't know anything about the New Artist Spotlight or the podcast, head over to newartistspotlight.org and you'll learn all you need to know. But uh, I am super pumped to have my guest on for today. He is the man, the myth, the legend of NAS, Charles Connolly. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a lovely, lovely intro. Thanks. You know, you, I, you deserve the loveliest intro. You are, uh, <laughs> I think, a lot of people look up to you in NAS, and you do you do a ton for us. So it's an honor well, to have I, you on. I do what I do, and that's that's it. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're great at what you do, and uh, yeah, it's it's always fun to have you on. You were obviously just on uh, Take Five, plumbing a chum. Yeah, that yeah, that was fun. Yeah, like there's that. there's never enough time on that show, though. It always goes by very quick for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for for those, uh, obviously, most people in NAS should know who you are, but uh, do you want to just give a quick intro about yourself uh, for those who don't, maybe new listeners to the show? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm never quite sure what to call myself. I'm a sort of singer, songwriter, producer, musician, sort of music man all in one. Album art designer because you do all your own artwork. You oh yeah yeah I, I sort of do. I mean I do all all of my stuff myself because it's just easier. But uh, yeah, um, I've been doing music for um, about well, kind of my whole life, but been really trying uh, for about t- probably twenty years. Um, but I've only been public with it for the last two. Uh, started in twenty twenty. So this is, this is the third year, um, and it seems to be going down rather well. So I guess I, I don't even know if I know this. What made you decide to go public after all those years of having kind of a, a catalog of songs um, built up? The, the pandemic, I think, same with most people. It gave me a chance. I mean, it, it's not a coincidence that all these artists just right. suddenly came in 2020. It was the first time that everyone had a chance. And it was definitely the first time I had a chance because um, I was in a job for years, pretty rubbishy job. And then they went bust. So I was out of a job and I thought, oh, OK, not great. And then the pandemic came along and I thought, this is worse or is this or is this better? I don't know. Let's see <laughs> what happens. And then that happened. And then um, I just thought, right, this is kind of my opportunity is everyone fell into the world of tiktok and jogging (laughs) i just did i just set it all up and thought right let's do this properly i've got i've got about 10 albums worth of stuff but as with a lot of artists i'm never really interested in my old stuff i always want to do the new stuff so i just did a song and then i thought well, wait, if I put this one out, then everyone's going to kind of say, well, that was really good or not like it. But if they really liked it, there's nothing else to listen to. So I just thought I'm going to stick out four singles released pretty much within three or four days. I think I didn't know anything about any of the distribution stuff. And I just thought it's so I, I was no pre-saved. I had no fans. I had no listeners. I had nothing. And I, I literally stuck out four singles within about three or four days just so they had something to listen to and then they were out that was it like (laughs) I think I sort of thought something magical would happen you know wow now they're out now anyone can hear them but the thing is anyone can but I'm one of millions of artists no one's ever gonna know so I just sort of went into it heavily and uh, tried and then you know messaged people found people pummeled people with it um and yeah and a lot of of people did seem to like it but it was still a couple of people just a few here a few there five listens a day that kind of thing you know and uh yeah and then and then the rest is probably what you're going to ask me which is but, How did I find Naz? Well, no, I, I, we've, we've been over that before. We don't have to go into all of that, but <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, but that, that really it, is, that really is the, the sort of, um, that's where it all started completely. It's, it's funny how, how much you kind of, 
we've all learned, I think, since then, because I think pretty much everyone in NAS, uh, 95%, probably had no idea about the distribution and yeah. pre-saves and all that stuff. And, you know, NAS probably wouldn't be a thing without the pandemic, too, which is interesting, but yeah. a blessing, yeah. I guess, for a lot of us, too. Because yeah, I, there were, I For me, the pandemic really didn't have any bad sides at all. No. It was actually a great thing for me. I mean, obviously, it's not for everyone, and it, it hit so many people in a terrible way. But right. for me personally, it was great. It was it, just um, I'm being forced to not work and be at home mm-hmm. and do my music. Okay, okay, I'll do that, you know. Mm, that doesn't, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I don't know, everyone was just moaning and moaning. And I thought, well, you know, unless you're critically ill or you know people who've died, mm-hmm. then there's, there's really, you know, and yeah. the weather was amazing here in London, which is quite rare. But, yeah, I was, yeah. I, I was, uh, I was lucky enough to be in your same boat where I'd, I didn't know anyone who died or anything. And yeah. it was, it was, it was not uh, as bad as it was for other people, uh, thankfully mm. for me. But yeah, so you you start off with those four songs. You've released a few more since then, including uh, your latest release, Spotlight. Uh, it's a couple weeks old now, and it's just uh, it's fresh off of back to back top twenty number one spots. I, know, I, I do feel a bit, believe. I I, I I mean, obviously, I feel amazing, but I also feel a bit bad because there's I think now it's about five six hundred artists in in mm-hmm. the in the spotlight, and not the song in the. The new you're, in, you're in the spotlight now and and um yeah because um they have all their songs there to choose from for us to choose from and the voting and there i am at number one and then there i am at number one again and it's just like give the others a chance it's not fair so i was sort of i got my number one i was really happy with that it was great um and it's also lovely when it's first when it's as right. in it's really Deb- like a and, debut and number, one. number one is such a lovely I feeling. Say. It's so um, cool. But then it's sort of got that, tick that off, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, now, now someone else. Yeah, it's always not, exciting not, when like not JHM, but <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. I think he was number two, wasn't he? He was. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, but it, yeah, it's always exciting too when when a new artist who's never had the number one spot gets that. That's always kind of. I think I think a lot of people enjoy seeing that, but you know your song mm. deserves all the number ones, and it's it's. I think it's been a while since someone's gone back to back, at least with the same song. I know JHM's gone back to back a bunch of times, but maybe not with the same single. Yeah, I, I was surprised, but very very happy. Yeah, it's a big it's a big honor, and you know, it's a it's a great song. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the story behind Spotlight, um, the song. Um, I, I mean, I know a bit about it, but if you want to, what, what, uh, was the inspiration behind yeah, all of that? Um, it was, um, basically that, as I said, the, the NAS, um, has done, I was going to say so much for me. It's pretty much done everything for me. Um, in the, without it, I think I'd still be on my five listeners or something a day or five streams a day to people probably took pity on me and it's just been everything it's 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 not just in terms of success or just getting the music heard but in terms of my feeling i i feel good i've i've never known musicians it sounds yeah. a bit weird but i've just i've never known musicians I, I, when i was at school i did but that was a little while ago and um yeah, so it's just anyone I've ever known has not particularly... They may like music, but they're not into music, and right. they certainly don't make music. And suddenly to be in this whole community, uh, and it is a real community, it's amazing. Um, and it's just geeky enough, you know, that it doesn't get too techy and boring and, right. and annoying Um but it is still kind of all of us with that same love of music and passion and everything. Um, and that's kind of what it's done for me is it's just made me feel like I'm in the right place now because if my whole life is music, why the hell don't I know anyone in music? That just sounds ridiculous. So that was the the best thing uh, about it. Um, and also I'm involved in it in quite a few different ways. Um, and I just like the the sort of versatility of it. 
that I'm not just doing one thing and that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it really is an incredible community. Um, you know, obviously Ed started it and then with the help of everyone, all the moderators and then every individual artist who's ever been on it, it's just kind of grown into this really amazing place. And I think I'll echo a hundred percent what you say. Like, I don't, I, now I know a couple more musicians, but I, when the, in 2020 or 2019, I didn't know any. And it's so nice to be able to talk to someone like you or Pancham or whoever, Shan and, you know, talk music and get tips and just have like actual real in-depth conversations about it. Like, like you said, you have friends that are fans of music, but yeah, they don't, they don't have that passion where you talk about creating music and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a haven yeah. For sure. Also, because of the the diversity of all the different styles of music, mm-hmm. it seems weirdly like everyone that everyone makes their own style of music, but everyone seems to be into all different kinds of music, which is very rare for what I call normal people. Right. <laughs> because yes. they're just like they're you know like mainstream <laughs> pop or they're hip hop or whatever you know whatever it is. Well, um, we call them and they normies. Tend to stay in that. What? We call them normies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, yeah, mm. I know. Yeah, it's it, it, everybody does, uh, you know, their their taste span multiple genres. And I think the cool thing, too, is that you kind of get exposed to maybe genre, genres that you don't mm. normally listen to at yeah. an artist spotlight. So there's, yeah, the benefits are uh, unbelievable. So, well, and I, I, I wouldn't know you. If I if I didn't yeah, know, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, just aside from the whole music thing, mm-hmm. there are. Uh, I mean, I get on with and chat with loads of them, loads of artists, loads of mods. But there, there's a small sort of handful. Not you, obviously. You can't stand you. Of course. But, um, I'm joking, man. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, you, um, Shayan, Wilco, Andres, uh, and Ed. Um, I I talk to all of you tons um, just because, and, and often it's just nothing to do with music. It's just, right. just chat, you know, it's, it's lovely. And uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. proper, it's friendship. Right. We're, we're I never thought friends. I'd have that sort of friendship through the internet. It's right. just, you know, cause that yeah. to me, that just sounds like Tinder or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it, it sounds weird to think, but then it, it happens. And yeah, you know, you know, I th- I think about you guys when I'm when I'm at work or when I'm listening to a song. I'm like, oh, I bet Charles would really like this song, mm-hmm. or you know, yeah, completely. It, it's uh, I gotta send him this link. You know, like you just sent me a a, a, a playlist the other day because you thought yeah I would like it. So I, I haven't checked it out yet, but I will. Um, it's gone I downhill. I probably wouldn't bother with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good for one week. I don't know yeah, what happened. That was it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Naz is is wonderful. Um, and it's uh, really cool that you you've dedicated and wrote this song, kind of you know, as a as a thank yeah. you almost. I to just it. I just wanted to to thank you for. Oh yeah, I never said about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the whole Naz meant everything to me, and so I just did this song. Just it was pretty much a thank you, and that was it. And it was just to everyone uh from me but i wanted to involve uh you know as many as i could as many as who would want to uh, right. be involved i didn't sort of force anyone um yeah and so just um just for just for backing vocals it wasn't like a mm-hmm. you know i need an accordion on here i need some beats on this it was just just that and then i could get into because i'm so used to doing stuff on my own that right you know and also the organization of it i thought it was enough for me just to have at least just to have the all the singers and everything and then st- still you have to put it in and mix it all so it's still a bit of work but if it was every part was done by someone that that's a different thing i uh yeah I, how, do you remember how many voices you ended up having uh including me it was 20 cool cool um yeah yeah i think when maybe when i first talked to you back in the instagram days before we were all on discord um i don't yeah i don't think you would have worked with anybody else but maybe that or at least i got the got the yeah. impression that um, you're... i i still prefer in general to work mm-hmm. on my own um, yeah but i am much more open to working with people um there is something coming 
quite soon when eventually I finish it. Um, who's with someone else? Which was someone else. Ooh. Uh, I do kind of keep things a secret beforehand. I'm I'm very private in that way. Yes, I don't I... like. I don't like the in between. I don't want people to hear bits, either hear about something or hear just in case it doesn't happen or something like that. I don't like people to hear unfinished stuff because it's because it's not finished, you know. So it doesn't sound right. No, right. yeah. And then mm-hmm. I'll, you know, I'll say sort of, oh yeah, but it's not mixed yet. No, it could be better. It's going to be much better than that. No, I haven't added not. the vocals yet. Yeah. Hmm? I haven't added the vocals yet. I haven't written the lyrics yeah. yet, but listen to this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a hi hat pattern, but exactly. what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so uh, Ed Eagle also kind of did uh, a similar thing with Bi, where he involved a bunch of uh, artists from NAS. Yeah. Uh, did he, did he say anything? Did, was he like, "Oh, you copying my idea, Charles?" No, actually, the the I had that idea before because this song is actually quite oh it's now quite old i think mm-hmm. i wrote it in uh i wrote it in october but i'd planned to do it months before and uh yeah and i actually had this idea of getting lots of people before i'd even heard his one so it's sort of i i don't know who you know and it, it's it's not the point it's not a who came first who stole what it's nothing to do it's just literally you know, it's not a completely original idea. It's not like a, oh my God, you took <laughs> other singers and put them in your song. You know, it's just, um, it, but it works well if it's done well. And Ed's by track was um, fabulous. Yeah, I it's loved phenomenal. That song. Absolutely love that song. And his, his um, sort of, um, his, I was going to say his production, but it's more the sort of subtlety in it, the nuance of it, that he he just treated it very carefully. And it yes. was done with a lot of heart and a lot of love um, and attention. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... And if you just kind of blap, 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 yeah, that'll do. You hear the blap, blap, blap. I don't know what blap, blap, blap is, but yeah. It's the blap, blap, um, blap. There we go. And uh Yeah. So yeah, that he, was the the buy thing. He did it. He did do a fan. It's my favorite song by his, um, by him. So, it, it's a great song too. So I'm uh, we'll, we'll we won't argue about who did it first, um, yeah. or anything like that, because like you said, that's not the point. But it's cool. Um, you, both both executions of uh, your songs were, were fantastic. I um, did mix that track, but he yeah. Mixed he mixed the vocals. I, I did that. ask if you mixed. But, I think I remember asking you if you mixed it. And yeah. You're like, no, Ed yeah. did, and he I, did a fantastic job. I had to, I had to be well. honest with people because I did actually, Ed, if you're listening, mm-hmm. I did get a couple of messages saying fabulous mixing on the vocals of of Bai on the sort of gang, I think they're called gang vocals. Yeah, and I had to be honest and say, well, I, I did mix everything else, but I didn't mix that. He he mixed all those and. I think he said I could send you them if you want. I said, to be honest, it sounds great. That's yeah. there's no need for it, you know. Also, he worried, sort of scared me. He said it's about 40, 40 singers or forty voices, not Ooh. quite forty tracks, but uh-huh. it's forty voices. Some of them singing together and all that. And I just thought, nah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? So doing all the no, rest, it sounds so. wonderful. No, it does sound wonderful. But it though. really did. Um, I did. I wasn't sort of taking the easy way out. That it sounded. Uh, just great. It's yeah, one of just, my favorite songs on the Nas, actually. Yeah, it's it's, like it's a, really a good. Classic. And you you mentioned the the nuance of uh, of his song, and then I think that's something you do really well too. Are all those little details? Like, you know, I, I always think it's really cool when you listen to a song, maybe on hopefully on not off a phone, but on speakers, maybe decent speakers, and then you you throw them on on headphones, and you hear all these other details. You're like, whoa, I didn't. I didn't know that was in the song, and mm. you always, always, never fail to do that with me. I remember the first time listening to uh, "Never Said Goodbye." I think on headphones, mm-hmm. I might have or a problem, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't have one, two, and it's a play on words because then you go three, four in the yeah. headphones, and I was just like, oh, that's that's brilliant, and you kind of <laughs> you do those little things also. And I in think the, I told you at the time that I, I nearly didn't put it in. I nearly muted yeah, that track. I remember. While I was mastering it, it was right at the end. I just thought, is that a bit naff? Is that a bit cheap? And no, but no, that's, the that's... fact that you've said it, you know, yeah. that I'm, I'm very pleased because I think most people just, it's quiet. It's in the background. Most people just probably wouldn't notice it. 
Right. And that's kind of yeah. like, it, I always, I kind of almost feel like I get rewarded for listening to a yeah, song yeah. with headphones. That's I don't true. know. Like the artist put that in just for me to secretly find one. That was maybe it. 90% of people when, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But you do the same thing in, in Spotlight too, uh, or where the right at the beginning where you uh, open the door, I think, and door, door, all the yeah, the, those cool little uh, panning and the door, yeah, the door thing. Um, uh, what is it? I closed the door and it goes da 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 da. Yeah, the the door 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 was actually meant to be a uh, like a doorbell. Oh, cool. No, no, um, I love it even more. So it was just that kind of close the door, and then the doorbell rings, and it's oh, and it's the NAS, yes. and that was kind of it. Tough for you to do them live, then, huh? Yeah, this is one of the reasons <laughs> that I can't really do live stuff. Uh, other reason is what you said. There's so mm-hmm. much going on. Yeah, and I don't really want to do. I know a lot of people do this, and it's and that's fine if it works for them. It's just I don't particularly want to do that backing track thing. Right. Yeah. You know, there's put the, put the backing track on and then just just sing. Yeah, uh, or sing and play the guitar. It works for some music in some venues, but I, I don't know. It's, it's almost just, like you need like a uh, a separate artist name with a more stripped down production style to yeah. have songs that you can do. Because I've thought like I'm like how oh, I would never be able to do Veronica live unless I just hit play on a backing track and. Well, I sing think that over. one would work. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, the sort actually, of simplicity of it would work quite well, but I think it would. You'd maybe be missing aspects of mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I mean, like you, I guess you could do regular bass guitar, but it's like 808 programmed in there for, but whatever. You know, yeah. I, I know what you're saying though, but um, yeah, it, it would be fun to do though, somehow. Um, one other thing I love too about all your songs is, is the the drum programming and Spotlight's no different. Um, yeah um i think you i think a few people have said i think coastal town said uh something about my drums a few times um and it's because i'm a drummer i started with drums uh that was the first instrument i learned how to play when i was nine i started and uh that sort of gave me a foundation for it sounds weird it gave me the foundation for music the only instrument with no notes but it really did because it grounded me in timing and uh, also in sort of structure, in feel. Um, and it gave me a, yeah, exactly. But it gave me the timing with all the other instruments. So with uh, the obvious one is bass. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the order it went for me was it was drums, then guitar, then bass. And then I'm still I'm still not really I don't really play the piano I just make it sound like I can. So I know I talk to you about it, the but I can't, you know. programming the little notes dragging it's, them on the screen. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's it's what like I do too. Sound, oh, your your feel is so your touch is so good. It's so sensitive. It's so you really know when to push and when to let. But that's me like with a mouse <laughs> altering velocities. I know. It takes twenty times the time. I, I'm also a bit lazy that I can't be bothered to get the keyboard out. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't have a, a proper studio studio. I have my living room and I don't want my living room to be just a studio right. that I can eat in the corner. You know, it's not really, it's not great. I don't want it to look, ugh. I don't want foam pieces and I don't want keyboards and wires everywhere and all that. Um, so I just tend to just go, oh, I can do it. It'll take me much longer, but I'll just do it with the mouse. It's fine. But yeah, the drums, uh, just because I've got the feel uh, from being a drummer, I think most people don't quite get drums because they're not a drummer. So they either get someone else or it's just kind of boom, bap, boom, boom, bap with a really... I feel attacked. Annoying, I feel personally um, attacked. No, <laughs> no, it's just this thing where no. I've noticed that you it's either people are using loops or they're just or it's just one thing from beginning to end. Or when it comes to a fill, it's the most un it it, it doesn't suit the song, or it's in the wrong place, or it's mm-hmm. something. And I always just want it to I, I know what's natural for me to play. So I just emulate. It's almost like air drumming with my eyes closed and then just so I'll try and emulate that, and then, and then do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of your, your skill at programming the drums. Um, I know you've talked about like some of the trick. I've asked you for tricks, and you're like, velocity is a huge thing. 
Velocity is yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, otherwise it's just completely programmed. Right. If because I actually tend to quantize my stuff just because it's a bit simpler. Mm-hmm. Um, my stuff's pretty, you know, yeah. there we go, good, that's the beat, and that's it. So I don't have to mess around with different things or sort of sway between and or get the, the feel of a live band or anything. So um, quantizing, I think, is all right, but the mm-hmm. velocity is the vital thing. Right. It's got and, to be up and down. And, like, you can, I mean, like in Spotlight, before it hits the chorus, it... Uh... You know, you do the the little fills with the toms mm-hmm. that kind of slow down the song into the chorus, and you know it just works perfect. And uh, I'm I'm envious of of your skill with that, but uh, I, I don't play drums too. Are we ever gonna? It's, are we ever it's just gonna, a feeling, really. It's yeah. Fun. Are we ever gonna get to hear real drums on a on a tr- Charles Connolly track? Do you think? Um, but frankly, probably not because mm-hmm. I just can't. I don't have a drum kit. Right. Um, the weird thing is I started with drums and I was drumming for a, from the age of nine to about, well, I mean, you could say I'm always a drummer, but I haven't actually touched a drum kit in about 10 years. Wow. And I, uh, I've never had a drum kit. And I even studied drums at college. Uh, I went up to the highest grade you can do but I've never owned a drum kit. And you imagine that with guitar. No. <laughs> it's just absurd. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I've been playing guitar for two decades. I've got up to the highest grade. Never owned a guitar. Yeah. It's just absurd. Yeah. I didn't even have those sort of, pra- you know, those little pras- uh, plastic uh, practice pads. Right. I didn't have those. I just, I didn't even do the pots and pans thing. Um, but they, the drums are annoying because they're really loud the yeah the the they're um, hard to hard to have in a house or an apartment that's what i mean they just don't it's like they, impossible it's difficult with something like a trumpet but with a, a, a drum kit it's huge it's loud it's expensive the the sound is really difficult to get right and then if you're using it for recording you know the the room really has to be treated well and then the mic set up and mm-hmm. everything and it's just it's a pain uh, i don't I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. frankly, no, I don't think I will be. Um, if I'm actually, someone did offer me. Someone said maybe next year that uh, they'd love to have me in the studio, and I Ooh. thought oh, that sounds good. So maybe, maybe I don't know. Well, uh, if that ever happens, I'll I'll, uh, I'll be giddy. Um, but I love your program drums too, because like I said, I'm jealous, and they're they sound like I. Honestly, probably couldn't even distinguish them from real ones because they're that good. Well, that's um, that's the goal, right? So, and you you do it, well, you do it. Thank you. Um, well, I think it's about time. We've talked about Spotlight for a while. Uh, I think it's about time to listen to it. Do you want to uh, intro it for all to hear? Sure. Um, this is a Spotlight by me, Antirites.
Once again, that was Charles Connolly with his latest single, the back-to-back Top 20 winner, Spotlight. Uh, fantastic track, man. Love it. Cheers, um, thanks. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I remember, I think, when you were writing a review for Ryan of Skinny Dippers, um, Panties is the song. Mm. You talked about a, a post-chorus in his song. I believe that was the oh, review. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. I don't, I don't ever remember the... The reviews I write are just well, doing next, and that's it. You've written yeah. about, you know, 70 of them probably now. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, actually, I think uh, I think it's 85. 85. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I short <laughs> sold you. I'm sorry. 85. That's incredible. <laughs> But yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that uh, post chorus thing, and that that's kind of what what's going on in Spotlight. Would you say with the "You Fly Like a Bluebird" part after the sort of? You could I was be unsure on. what that structure was called because okay. I wasn't sure what. It sort of almost has two choruses. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if that was just one really long chorus, or if it's just part one and two, or is it just like you say a post chorus? I don't know because you kind of got the everyone's singing. That's obviously the chorus, but mm-hmm. then you've got the spotlight got me through thing. Right, and that, so, and I mean, uh, that it's part's... more like it is kind of post chorus with a refrain. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's uh, yeah. It all works yeah, together very well. Go. And it's all very catchy, of course, in in true <laughs> Charles Connolly fashion. I mean, yeah, I do like catchy. So I was, I think, you know, when I I was uh, lucky enough to be one of the people on there, unless you left me out, which if you did, no, shame. No, I think kidding. I every single one I was sent is in there. I don't think I left out any. I I remember nice. I remember singing my part, sending it to you, and then having it stuck in my head when I went and showered immediately after. So. That's just a good, in, that's a instantly good catchy. So considering that was just literally like programming I know. four chords on a piano, just so something someone they had uh, something to listen to and some some that timing and everything. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, you never fail to uh, to deliver the catchiness, man. <laughs> and speaking of Ryan of Skinny Dippers, you guys just had a little brief meetup in uh, in we London, did. right? We did. It How was quite was a surprise. Yeah, he he messaged me and said. Uh, uh, are you in London, London, or are you like on the outskirts or whatever? And I said, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't live in central London, but I can be there in less than an hour. But why, you know, what, why do you ask? He said, I'll be there on, you know, at the end of the week for a day or two. Do you want to meet up? Right. <laughs> Let me think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> my God. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, and it was the first, you know, I've never met anyone mm-hmm. from, from the spotlight. And, um, yeah, just uh, so, uh, we were both so excited, um, and quite astonishingly, it went to plan. That, we, we that never happens. A place and a time and a day, and we met at a pub called the Eagle, which was a, a nice sort of uh, um, nod to Ed. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, awesome. Yeah, and we we had a lovely lovely time. Just just a couple of hours or something, you know. But yeah, it's great. Really, really good to me. I um, called. I call being the, next. The, the one person I met is the one person I've actually done something with in music, right? You know, because that remix. So that, that is cool. That, it's a uh, come full circle. That's kind of cool. Mm, That's yeah. really cool. But I, I do call next. I get to be next to go to London and meet Charles. Excellent. Nobody nobody else gets to do it before me. <laughs> Um, I would yeah. love that to be competition. Yeah, I, w- I would, would. It would be. A, it would be fun. Um, the, the good thing about being in London is it's more likely that people will right come to London for a bit, for a day, for a week, for whatever. Um, but uh, like where Wilco lives up north, oh. a little town up north, it's very unlikely that people. Are, I just happen to be going to this little town up north. That's you know, I can't actually remember where he. Somewhere in Yorkshire, but I can't remember. Plus, plus it's Wilco too. So I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not that's, great, is it? <laughs> with his Poor. with his face <laughs> and his nah. and his, you know, football talk and you know, yeah, yeah, but the face. I mean, yeah, you know, the face, the face, the beard, the rapping. Yeah, love you, love you, Wilco. <laughs> um, all right, well, I would Wilco would actually kill me in Origin, I think, if I didn't do the. Uh, the uh, quick fire five, the new oh spotlight pod. So I, okay. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be murdered. I want to be invited to 
some little town in Yorkshire someday. Um, yeah, they they are the murdering types. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. You know, the face. Let's go. It's the face. Let's go. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm going to do this. You got five seconds to answer each of my five questions. Five uh, seconds? Or 15 seconds. 15. <laughs> Sorry. The, what was, what was the quick Hopefully fire five seconds? doesn't have a long name. <laughs> you have one second to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 15 seconds to answer each of my five questions. There we go. I think I spit that out right that time. Uh, all right. Question one. What is your favorite song currently on the New Artist Spotlight? Uh, the A plus by Coastal Town. I figured you might say that. Uh, question <laughs> number two: If you could hang out with one person on NAS, who would it be for a day? I think it's going to have to be you. Oh, definitely you. But also, possibly, as in not possibly, but as in definitely, but possibly, you know. Anyway, Shane. Yeah. He, he would be great, too. He would be a load of fun. Yeah. Um, if you could trade voices with anyone on NAS, who would it be? Singing voices. Singing voice, yes. It's going to be Shane. Yeah. I, I to be honest, I just think he's, he's just, it's an astounding voice. It is. I'm it's, jealous. It's just, yeah. I hate him it. and I love him, but mostly I love him. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite song that you've ever written, that you've released? Probably... Uh, it's either Europe in the summertime or to see my lover again. I think okay. they're my two best. They're both great. Not sure, yeah, I'm not I, sure I, which one. I would probably pick those two or never said goodbye to is still one of my favorite. I um, think most people, I don't think know that because it was before. That, I think that was your first one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My first four singles, most people now probably don't know. Got to get it those. Was all before it blew up. Before right. the Naz went huge. It was just at the beginning. And now they're old. They're old. Just kidding. Yeah, I, exactly. I hate that. I hate. I still. I still listen to very old music all the that's, time. Because that's it's, my version of the early Beatles. That's yeah. like the, that's my old oh, it's, stuff. It's, you know? it's before Charles put out Rubber Soul or Revolver yeah, exactly. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and then final question. Sorry, I'm probably screwing this up by taking so much time in between. Final question. What is what was the hardest song to mix by someone else that you've mixed? It's someone who isn't on the Naz I won't say the artist's name but um, he gave me 50 tracks but 20 stems of vocals Ooh. and I had to time and tune every single one of those and he needed the whole mix back in one and a half days Ooh, I hope and that you wasn't just tuning this was I... the entire thing mixed and somehow I managed to do all those 20 tracks tuned and timed in one day. I don't yeah. know how I did that. And then I, the next day I just mixed it all. Oh and he goodness. said, yeah, that's great. But that <laughs> was pressure because of the one and a half days. Thing. Right. That's an it incredible just, turnaround. It just, Woo. yeah. So that, that was exhausting and, and very tricky. Um, and also it wasn't, he wasn't the best singer in the world. Mm -hmm. So tricky even 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 harder That's a memo please anyone who i who wants me to mix their stuff please uh uh reach out to me but please don't give me 20 sets of vocals to and, do in a day and a half little snip, snippets but unless you've got the most absolutely stunning voice in the world having a choir of of stuff yeah. from beginning to end is going to take me a while yeah that's some uh, that's some bohemian rhapsody stuff right there yeah Ooh, yeah that's and uh, and freddie and the gang can do it yeah so i wouldn't have to do anything That'd be great. <laughs> no they, 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 they've done all the work yeah, yeah. All right, uh, real quick, last question for you before you wrap oh. up the show. Actually, last two questions. First, uh, you know, as a as a, a aspiring mixer myself, and there's plenty of people on NAS who like to do their mixing. Can you yeah. can you give us one or two of your favorite mixing tips if you have them? I know it's kind of a dumb question to say, maybe, but it's not necessarily a dumb question at all because I think the best advice. Is nothing about plugins or techniques or anything. And it's just to open and listen. I think that is the very, very best way. I know it sounds stupid. It sounds absolutely well, obviously, no. I'm not going to not listen. But it, I think people just, there's a difference between hearing and listening. 
hearing is just its own and you've got used to hearing it and you're not actually listening. Uh, and you can, if you step back uh, and also sort of breaks, take a day or two away, mm-hmm. don't go constantly. I'm also very hypocritical because I do that all the time. I just don't take breaks because I just want it to be done. Because they but, have to be um, done in a day and a half. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the best thing is just, uh, just step back and listen and see what pokes out or what is almost inaudible. Because I think one of the most important things with mixing is not the technical tweaks of compression and EQ and saturation mm-hmm. and reverb and all the blah, 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 blah. It's the levels. And I've noticed more and more that people's sound is getting better and better. But the simple thing of the drums aren't quite loud enough, the lead vocal's too loud or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. it's just literally a case of, and that's it. And the sound's perfect. Just so like even it out. Obviously taste is, is a different thing. You know, some people really like to blast the lead vocals. Some people like to blast the drums or, you know, so it's taste, but I think that's it. It's, it's more about the levels. That's more important than the overall, than the, the actual tweaks in sound. Right. Cool. Well, uh, thank you for sharing. And, and uh, I think practice too, probably right. Just practice. Yeah, experience. That's it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna pick up a guitar the first time and be able to play it. You, no matter how many YouTube videos you just watched. Um, Absolutely. And then my last question for you: You've got uh, a whole catalog. I know you, of stuff hidden away. When when can mm. we expect a full Charles Connolly album released? Uh, well, I've been thinking about it um, because although I've got about ten albums worth of stuff. There is one full album, which I did. I finished in at the end of 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is written as an album. So it's not just a collection of tracks. And it's, I won't really go into it, but it's kind of like a concept album in that it, once it starts, it, it's still tracks, it's still songs, but once it starts, there's never a gap. So everything flows throughout for 14 tracks just goes it's been on my mind for ages and i would kind of sort of like to maybe possibly do it next year okay but if i do that will be the year because I've, i've in the last few days i've been thinking about it and i've sort of got an idea of how i might put it out Mm -hmm. because an album even an ep these days is kind of a bit of a waste because you get the lead track that's on all the playlists and the rest are kind of forgotten right um you can kind of do it with a four track ep and just really push them all but if you've got an album you always find that two or three tracks get all the streams and the rest is never heard and i didn't want that to happen particularly with this one because it really is a piece Mm-hmm. Like there weren't even obvious singles. It's just a piece. And it's not avant-garde weirdness. And it's not, you know, it's me. But uh, yeah, another thing that put me off was I was I'm so obsessed with the whole sound and mixing. And I thought, oh, I could do it better these days. It's so daunting to, you know, yeah. 14 Tickle. tracks all blending to remix that. It was just, you know, there's hundreds of tracks, you know, mm-hmm. within them. And I just thought, I can't, I can't bear it. I can't, I was almost getting jitters just thinking about it. And then I, I listened to it a few times and I thought, it's damn good. It's never going to be perfect. Yeah. Right. I think it's fine. I don't think I have to remix it. So, yeah. 2023 then, maybe, possibly. Possibly. Possibly, possibly, possibly. mark your calendars, people, possibly. Yeah. Ho- hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's about, that's about all the time we have for today's show. Do uh, you want to just let everybody know where to find you? The easiest yeah. way? Well, I'm here. I'm in London. In London. Yeah, just Not in Yorkshire. Yeah. Just, just shout. Um, <laughs> on Tinternet, um, I, I forget, what is it? I think on almost everything, it's Connolly Tunes, at Connolly Tunes, Instagram, Facebook, if you use that, Twitter. Oh, uh, my website. Uh, I was going to say, Connolly don't you have a website? Com. Where you can find um, everything very easily. Yeah, and it, it's all there. Um, and also, if you do want to hire me for the mixing, um, there's a separate page on there. Uh, it's called Hire Me. So you'll see it there. But Charles Connolly Music.com. Charles Connolly Music.com. Okay, go there, hire Charles, listen to Charles, uh, one of my all time favorite artists ever. 
I love you, man. Oh, um, that's so sweet. Thank you. Th- thanks. Uh, thanks so much for being on the show today. And uh, if you guys want to listen to more episodes of the New Artist Spotlight podcast or Charles's music or all of our music, head over to newartistspotlight.org. Check out our playlist podcast. Charles's lovely reviews are on there, too. So we got everything. Newartistspotlight.org. And we will see you next time. New, new, new artist spotlight.